This is Carl at National RV Detroit and I'm going to walk through this 2020 Zinger model 299RE. Alrighty, so here we are on the outside. Uh, door side rear. So you can see it has um, power stabilizers. So you have one switch for both rear stabilizers and then there's another one up front for both front stabilizers. Okay. Uh, you have a, uh, a, a LP cooktop, running water, and a 110 volt AC refrigerator. Now keep in mind, you down here you've got a quick connect. Let's see if I can get it on camera. Let's see the blue cap there. Quick connect for the LP. Uh, uh, let me back up a bit. It's an LP quick connect fitting. Um, you'll have to plug in your uh, range top into there. Uh, before using it, that hooks to the, the LP tanks on the front, so you're drawing from the system. All right. Um, you've got a power awning, of course. Outside speakers. This is the vent for your range hood. Always remember to open the baffle. There's little latches on the corner there. You always want to open that up before you're going to vent to the outside. Otherwise, you keep it shut. Uh, you've got uh, TV antenna out, power. Um, this is a black tank flush. We'll get into more into that later. This, this particular model has some of the plumbing on the door side also. This is the fill for the fresh water tank. The reason you'd want to fill a fresh water tank, if you happen to go to a campground that does not have plumbing on the campsite, uh, you can pre-fill this tank here and then use the onboard pump to pump water. So even if you don't have a, a uh, fresh water, or I should say fresh water, even if you don't have city water, um, you could still use all the appliances and, and the fixtures and, and everything just like you do. Like you do. Um, this is the flusher black tank out. So the black tank is obviously toilet water and waste. The valves are on the other side. I'll show you that when we get over there. But while we're here, I'll just tell you that after you dump the black tank, you can leave the valve open and then you can just put the hose on here and turn it on, it'll flush the inside of your tank out. It'll spray it, clean off the sensors, uh, that sort of thing. So it's a good thing to do because it'll, if you clean off your sensors, um, you'll get a good, a good accurate reading on your monitor panel also. So that's important. Uh, it says quick drain right here, if you can see that. It's a big white, let me see here. That's where the sticker is, do I see the drain? Oh, there it is right there. So you can see it right there. That's to drain your fresh water tank. So I told you that's the fresh water fill right there. If you need to drain it, after you didn't use up all the water, let's say, and you're going to travel, you can just pull that gate valve and it comes whooshing out. All right, so your stairs fold right inside the trailer. Keep in mind, if you're on uneven terrain, you can adjust the length of the legs just by pulling. There's a pin on each leg. You just pull that completely out, and you can see there's holes there. You can slide the legs up and down to get them to the height you need. All right. You got a tie off for your dog there okay then of course there's the, the switch for the front stabilizer jacks there okay um, let's see what we got here We've got pass-through storage excuse my camera work so this is an override crank here let me let me walk to the other side before I tell you that so I make sure I give you the right information I have to look at this before I go any further Okay, so this tank, this here, this crank here is for your power tongue jack. In case it fails, you can always um, uh, operate it. You can you can crank it up and down just like a crank tongue jack. By by taking this cap off, you put the uh, the crank right on there, and you can crank it. In case this happens to fail, otherwise. You just have up and down and you have a hitch light there. All right, you have two uh, LP tanks that are full. A deep cycle marine battery. Okay. This little hook up here is, is for, a, in case you wanted to add a solar battery charger, you can plug it right in there and it'll charge your battery. All right. Okay. This is just a, a small, a, a, like a starter dump hose that comes with it. And that's a, a, let me see if I can show you. It's just an adapter to adapt your 30 amp power cord down to a 15 amp so you can plug it in at home. 
Keep in mind you can't run the air conditioner off of 15 amps, so you can use you can run everything in the trailer plugged in it to 15 amps except the air conditioner. So keep that in mind. It'll eventually pop a circuit breaker. Alright, these are your your dump valves that we talked about on the other side. You can see you got your black valve here, and then your gray valve there. Um, the gray is sink and shower water, the black is toilet water and waste. So you dump the black first. Then you'll dump the gray, just because the gray is cleaner, cleaner dirty water than the black water. Then I told you you could leave the gate valve open like this, go to the other side and hook up the hose, and it'll spray the inside of your black tank out and flush it out, okay? Alrighty. You have on this a, uh, a slide topper, which is like an awning over your slide out to keep the snow off or the um, pine cones or acorns or twigs or whatever. Now this is this have, this particular one is a 50 amp system, so you have a 50 amp cord. I told you, you could, we had an adapter to adapt the 30 down to a 15. Well, on this one, you can see there's a, another adapter to, do, to adapt your 50 to a 30. Let's see if I can get a good picture right there. So we have that on the end right now. If your campground has 50 amp, obviously you're just going to plug it in right here to the to the receptacle. Otherwise, you can adapt it down to a 30 amp. And even go down another level to a 15, but remember, you can't run the air conditioners on, uh, on 15. Alright, so this is the second gray tank here. It's uh, probably a galley tank. Um, I, I don't know the layout of the trailer. I'm trying to picture Yeah, so this would be a galley tank, sometimes go, called gray tank number two. Sometimes they call it a galley tank, but it's another gray tank. Alright. This is the outside of your water heater. I just want to show you that it's empty right now because it's winterized. So you can see that it's the plug is out, the plug is right here, and it's empty. So keep in mind, you before you turn this on, the switches to operate are inside, but in the springtime when you're going to use it, make sure you fill it up with water first. Uh, you can't run it dry or you'll damage it. So always make sure there's water in the in the tank before you turn it on, alright? This is just a city, or excuse me, this is just a outside shower sprayer cotton cold water this is where you hook up the city water the most common way to get water to the trailer you just hook up your hose turn it on and the whole thing's pressurized remember on the on the door side of the trailer I showed you you can fill up the onboard tank and then use the pump to pump water if you need to this housing here tells us it's pre-wired for a backup camera just so you know that takes a Furion camera um, while we're looking up like this you have to remember you have to go on the roof or have somebody do it every 90 days or so uh, figure three times a season once in the spring once in the middle of summer once in the fall you or somebody's going to go up on your roof and look around check all the sealant um, make sure there's no cracking no separation anything like that it's very important to check the seals on your trailer some people don't do it but it's, it's foolish not to because you're protecting your investment you keep it nice and dry inside um, they all have to be inspected it doesn't matter who made the trailer or what model it is they all need to be inspected okay alrighty so here we are inside let me see if I can get some more light here let's see there we go so this is your monitor panel here um, you can check your battery level it's totally charged although you want to check it when you're not plugged in your fresh water tank is empty your black water tank is empty gray one is empty and gray two is empty um, I said gray two was uh, your galley tank and I'm sure it is so uh, this this sink right here is um, let me get this straight yeah this sink here is attached to the the valve towards the back of the trailer the second uh, gray tank valve I showed you if that makes any sense to you and an auxiliary which you don't use that's in case you have a, a second toilet or something like that so that's not being used. Um, your water pump here, uh, to light your water here on gas, there, light it on electric there. Almost always you're going to use electric, not gas, um, because you're using campground electricity, it's the best way to do it. Always make sure that there's water in the tank before you turn it on because you don't want to dry fire it and damage it, okay? We've got lights here. Um, you can see some ambi ambiance lights there. Your slide out, I won't bring it all the way in and I'll just show you. Like so, and then back out. It'll ratchet when it gets all the way out. You'll hear it right there. When it makes that noise, you just take your finger off the button. 
it does that going in and coming out so that's just to keep it from over over extending or over retracting so it's supposed to do that and then your power awning is right here keep in mind you um, never leave your awning out unattended when you're not at the campsite if you're leaving the campsite roll it in you just push the button it's very simple so you don't want to leave it out so because it can get damaged very quickly <coughs> by the wind uh, this is just an analog thermostat furnace heat right there um, off of course fan right here this this fan is the air conditioner running without the compressor it just circulates air and then if you go all the way to cool it's the air conditioner uh, keep in mind that it, there's a lag time a little bit of lag time when you switch these on and off so it, you, it's to be expected all right your keys are hanging right here um, <coughs> excuse me microwave works like any other microwave this is your range hood vent and light, light here, or, or excuse me, fan there, and then light here, okay. Remember I told you to, on the baffle outside, open it up and, you know, open the latch on it so it flaps freely when you're venting to the outside, that's important. Okay, always travel with your glass range top cover closed or, so it doesn't break. So this you just spark to light, I assume there's gas on it because because the furnace is running, so you're just going to move it to light. You spark it, you can see it just lit right up there. You spark it, you're going to turn this all the way, or you turn it clockwise so it snaps. I'll do another one here so you can see it right there. So it's very simple. Um, the oven, there's down here at the bottom, all the way to the back, there's a pilot light. I'll spark it so you can see it. Hopefully, you can see that on the camera. I'm not sure if you can or not. But um, what you do to light it is you're going to come over here all the way to the right, there's the oven knob. So you go to the picture of the flame, which means pilot. Then you depress it and hold it. Then you're going to use this hand or this knob here, and you spark it by turning it clockwise until it, you keep looking down here until you see that the pilot light lit. Once it lights, you're still holding this in, right? Still depressed. Hold it for another 15 seconds or so till it heat it up. Then you go to operating temperature, and it cycles on and off like a regular oven does. But when you shut it off, the flame goes out, obviously. But so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the uh, oven. Every time you shut it off, it goes out. Okay. Um, this device down here is a power converter. Okay. So what this does, it converts 110 AC to 12 volt DC. Uh, you open it just by pushing it there. So you see on the AC side, it's got a regular 110 volt AC circuit breakers, just like you would have at home, and they're all labeled, right? Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC on this side. You've got 12 volt fuses here and they're all labeled. If any of these were to blow, they'll actually light up. There's an LED in there. So it'll light up and you can actually see it glowing through this perfor or through this um, tinted plastic right here. So you would know that a, a, just by walking by and looking down, you can see it glow and you know that you blew a fuse. All right. Uh, also, when you're plugged into 110 AC, regular shore power, this is a battery tender. It'll sense how much energy your battery has up front and it'll always keep it charged. If it's totally charged, it'll just trickle a couple amps to top it off. If it's low, it'll send 10 amps or whatever it needs to keep it charged. So it's also a battery charger slash tender. Okay? Alrighty. Alright, so let's see here. <clears throat> Self-explanatory. This, uh, let me see what we got here. This is a jackknife sofa, so you can jackknife it into a bed. Okay. You have your secret compartment here. Uh, the latch is right here. I don't know if it's got it latched or not. Let me make sure it's unlatched. You just grab it right here and pull it and it opens. As you can see. So it's a pantry. It's whatever you want it to be. Um, behind here, the screws are loose and we're, we'll just leave them like that because the, the bypass valves on the back of the water heater are behind this panel here. Right now it's water, it's, it's winterized, so the, there's valves on the back of the water here that are in the winterized mode, uh, meaning um, it's bypassed. So if you pump antifreeze into the system, it can't get into the, into the water heater tank because if it does, it'll leave a really foul taste and smell. So they give you the bypass valves to bypass it. Right now it's bypassed because it's winterized. In the spring, you're going to hook your fresh water up to the city water hookup, Turn it on, then go around and flush the toilet, turn on the shower, all the every faucet, and you flush it till till the pink stops coming out, and which is the color of the antifreeze, and then just clear water comes out. After you've done that, 
you'll go in this behind this panel and you'll switch the valves on the water heater to camping mode. So you have to learn a bit more about that if you don't know, but uh, that's where you would do it, okay? They actually have heat in this room for some reason, I don't I'm not sure why, but they do. Okay, so this, let me see, there's some some remotes here somewhere. Let me look. Oh, there they are. Okay, so you have um, your TV remote here. This is mine here. TV remote here. This is your fireplace remote. And this is your sound bar remote. Okay, I'll just grab this one so I can show you the fireplace. Now, the, the sound bar, it, it, does, it has FM radio. Uh, you can stream off this USB port right here, so you could take a. U I'll put all your favorite albums on one USB stick and take them all with you. For example, uh, you got A and B, which are the the speakers. A is inside speakers, B are outside speakers. You can also hook up with Bluetooth from your phone or tablet and stream. So there's a lot you can do with it. Um, the uh, fireplace is also a space heater. Uh, let me show you here. This obviously that's off. Turn it on. You can see how it's flashing H right there. That means the fan is on high. Okay. Now, let's see if I can get this right here. This is to set the 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 uh, the uh, what should I say? This is how you set the flame appearance. Okay. Then um, you're on high, off, low. If you can see that, back to high. That's the fan speed. And then you can set the temperature. It goes up in five degree increments, right? So 70, 75, 80. So you can only do five degree increments, but that's all you really need. It's a thermostat. And also, you can't, I can't set it here for you right now, but the bottom one right here in the lower left or lower right is a timer. So you can set it to turn on and shut off uh, when you need to. Okay. This is just a chiller for uh, beverages, wines, uh, soda pop, beer, whatever you have. Your refrigerator is an automatic refrigerator, so you're just going to turn it on. It always seeks out AC power, but it, it's all automatic. It's very simple. It's pretty nice. It's got, a, it's got plenty of room for camping. Okay, let me set the remote down so I don't forget it here. Okay, let's see what else we have. Did I forget anything here? I think I covered everything. There should be a LP detector around here somewhere. Um, let's see. Where would it be? Uh oh, I lost it. I'm looking here, maybe it's behind here. I just didn't see it. Nope. Uh oh, we have a mystery. I'm not seeing the obvious here. Okay, let's there, there. It's not there. Ah, oh, I walked right past it twice, three times maybe. So it's right down here. It detects uh, carbon dioxide and LP gas buildup. I'll do the self-test there. LP, it just tested for it. test for carbon dioxide, right? And now, when it beeps really slowly like that, it's telling you your battery's low. Right? And then it goes back to green. It should always be green. If it goes off, uh, you uh, obviously take everybody outside, you open the door, go outside, shut the gas off at the front and figure out what's going on. And if it beeps very slowly like it was, it's just telling you that your battery's low. Okay, so it does three different things. Alright. Okay, so the main thing about the bathroom the stick of the shower are pretty self-explanatory. It works like any other stick of shower. Always run your fan with the shower to pull the humidity out. And the toilet, when people talk about it being dry, they're talking about the gas, or the, the uh, that's, that's residual water pressure there. That's antifreeze coming out. That's why it's pink. But right below here, directly down there, is the black tank, right? When they talk about dry, that's what we're talking about. So you can't run this dry. So when you first get to the campsite, you hook up your power and your water, you come inside, uh, and then you're going to take your chemical, whichever brand you use, one dose, you just read the directions, put one dose right in the bowl. Then you'll step on the flush pedal right here, and when you step on it, water will come swirling out because you're hooked up to water. It'll flush the, the, the chemical into the, into the black tank down there. You're just going to stand on it, 
and fill, put about a gallon or so of water in there. There's no way to tell exactly what that is or how long it's going to take. Just use common sense. It doesn't have to be exact. The bottom line is you have to have some water in there plus chemical. Otherwise, the smell will be uh, extreme to say the least. You'll only do it once. So um, make sure when you start using it and the black tank is empty, you put chemical and water in there before you start using it. Now, if you're going to stay at the campsite and let's say it's full, so you have it dumped and you're still safe for another week, after you dump the black tank, you come back in here and repeat the procedure. Chemical and about a gallon of water. Okay? Gotcha. This GFCI here, all the, just keep in mind, all the plugs are wired through a GFCI, even the one in the outside, so he'll reset them inside. All right, so what have we got here? This, the reason this is a 50 amp system, it's pre-wired for a second air conditioner. That's what they're going to say on this sticker here. So the AC would drop right in here. You would use the type that has a, a ceiling assembly with controls on it. And uh, you would use a 13.5, which would turn this into an ice box, believe me. Um, so it's pre-wired for a second AC in case you want to add one. It's a very simple install. And uh, this, is, this is where you would put it, okay? TV, there's a backer plate here to mount a TV bracket. You got an antenna plus power to hang another TV. Of course, a closet, which is also plumbed for a washer dryer if you wanted to uh, to uh, have one in here. Now, keep in mind that the first thing I would do if I was you, we don't have any here that I know, but what I would do if I was you, that if you if I turn this on and your water's hooked up, it'll come fly, squirting out of there like a fire hose. So I always suggest that people get the caps, just get a, a plastic cap. It's uh, You can get them at any hardware store and just screw them on there. So even if you accidentally turn this on or a kid grabs a hold of it and turns it on, it's not going to flood your trailer out or anything like that. So, but this is the pre, this is the this is the the uh, drain pipe and the hot and cold water for a washer dryer combo. Okay. Uh, your escape window, your emergency window. You're just basically going to go like this. You push it through all the way through. Um, you can use this like that to vent the trailer, but if you're escaping, you would push that all the way through, then you grab a hold of the red tab, pull the screen out, and out you go. And just always make sure you land on your feet. <laughs> if possible. Okay. I think that covers it now, so. Okay, I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Well, you can always call us and uh, we'll talk you through anything. There's a packet in, in this bottom drawer that has a a, a manual for every appliance and every attachment in here plus you can use um, go online type in the the manufacturer the type of appliance and the model number and you'll be able to see manufacturers videos of all this stuff there's a lot of ways to learn always in uh, as I stated earlier always inspect your roof you figure every 90 days or three times a season have someone go up there just look around check everything out make sure everything's tight no cracking or separation that's very important okay thank you very much